Today we have something pretty new from Fujifilm and it's their latest Fujifilm X-T50. Pretty unique, nice camera and it looks like it progresses on from the previous X-T series of the X-T30 and so on. So let's take a look around this body, take a look into the menu a little bit and just see what film simulations we have to see what's new about this camera. So you can see here we've got our selection here at the front, as we're kind of used to. We've got our manual, continuous and single shoot there. Button here to release the front cap, which reveals our sensor. Scroll wheel at the top right corner there. As we turn around, and we have our access door. Open that one up. Just get the light on there for you guys. And here we can see we have a microphone port at the top, or remote port. We also have a USB-C, which is multi-purpose. I think you can use microphones, charging, data, things like that with that one. And then you've got your HDMI, micro HDMI at the bottom there. Closing the door, moving on. We then have the LCD screen. And that's kind of the old school swivel kind of LCD screen that we've been used to. It's not a fully articulating screen. Quickly going on with the bottom here, we have our battery port. And this will host a section there for popping an SD card in there as well. If you can see that, the light might not show it. The batteries that it takes in this camera, sorry, let's have a look at that. It's the MPW126S. Looking at the back of the camera here, it looks very familiar to what we're used to with these types of cameras. We have our drive there or our bin playback, AF on, little scroll wheel here, the eyepiece up the top, a viewfinder, and then we have our other buttons, AEL, joystick right here, the menu, the back button display, and the queue. Another scroll wheel here again. So, moving over to the top of the camera. Let me just go that way, sorry. So here we have our on-off switch, we have our exposure compensation, we have our auto select here, we can flick our camera into auto, then we've got our shutter speed, and what's new now is this nice dial here to the left. So let's take a look at this one. Now this dial is going to allow us to flick through all the different film simulations. making it pretty easy never to dive in if you want to change things. Another little trigger here to pop up the flash, which looks like so. Yeah, pretty nice little camera, nice looking camera. Okay, so let's dive into the menu here and just see how it all looks. So if we were to go through the film simulation dial here, it should show up on our screen. So there we have Velvia, Astia, Classic Chrome, Rayla Ace, Classic Neg, Nostalgic Neg, Across, and here it looks like we can do some of our own custom settings there in those ones. Bringing us back around to the standard. It's pretty nice. It's a nice touch. It's something new. And I think it's something that they should move on with in the future on many other cameras. Diving into the menus, we can take a look. Not much would have changed. If you're familiar with the Fujifilm menus, then this part may be a little bit boring to you, but at least we can kind of just fly through. Anyone that's not used to Fujifilm yet, they can see all the settings and things here. So let's just go through some of these. As you can see, you can fully control the sharpness clarity, tone curve, color, skin skin smoothing effects now, uh, the color chrome effects, yeah, really nice camera for customization. Now there's plenty to go through in the menus, obviously I won't dive into every single one otherwise this video will be about three hours long, but at least 
if you are planning to buy a future film and you was wondering what's in the menus, what you can dive into, well, hopefully this will help you. I might be going quite fast, so you might have to pause if you are interested in seeing what was actually on the list here. Okay, so you might be wondering what it can record in video, so let's take a look at that. You see here we've got 4K 16x9, and I think the highest resolution if we go up would be 6.2K. And it looks like you can record that in 29.97 frames, 25 frames, 24 frames, and then your 23.98. You've also got 4K DCI there, and you can record that up to around 30 frames per second. So now there's 4K DCI, and that's actually can go to near enough 60 frames per second. Pretty cool. And let's go back out and take a look quickly at the image quality. So you've got the image size there. You can see 40 megapixels is what this sensor is displaying and recording at. And we've got all the different frame sizes we can work with. So then, that is the Fujifilm X-T50. Hope you enjoyed it.